begin day two of the first Manila Bulletin Sustainability Forum with the keynote presentation from the Department of Tourism in the talk, A Path Towards Sustainability, Sustainable Tourism in the Next Six Years. The department will reveal how this administration will make eco-friendly tourism a possibility and a priority. So let's welcome the Secretary of the Department of Tourism, Secretary Cristina Frasco. I'm Christina Garcia Frasco, the Secretary of Tourism. I'm speaking to you from my home province of Cebu. In Cebu, tourism forms the lifeblood of our economy. It is the bedrock upon which the lives of millions of Cebuanos have depended for their livelihood. In Cebu, the culture of tourism is introduced to us from a very young age. A love of nature, an appreciation for our culture and heritage, and an awareness of the importance of preserving our natural environments. That also leads to this intense sense of pride of being Cebuan. When I was asked by the Manila Bulletin to give a talk on how sustainable tourism has changed the game and will continue to change the game for tourism, I thought of Cebu, particularly the municipality of Aluginsan, which has developed a very successful sustainable tourism initiative together with a community that has been recognized worldwide. I'm here in the Bohot River, where the municipality of Aluginsan, in coordination with the Bohot Aluginsan Ecotourism Association, runs a Bohot River cruise. This initiative was founded in 2009. 13 years later, it continues to thrive and give back to the community. By way of the Bohot River Cruise, the municipality of Aluginsan and Baitas has been able to demonstrate theories of sustainability that are often difficult to implement. But they have shown us that if you have strong tourism governance, it is totally possible to be able to develop eco-tourism community-based initiatives that will last for a long time and benefit the community in turn. On the aspect of tourism governance, the local government unit initially reached out to the community to give them an opportunity to appreciate the Boho River as well as to be able to harness it as a source of livelihood through tourism. They started out with capability building seminars and education initiatives that allowed the community to fully appreciate all the components of the Bohot River, from its varieties of mangrove, various species of birds, as well as marine life. Having a strengthened tourism governance has also allowed the community to be able to govern itself in terms of running the Bohot River. Prior to the development of this initiative in 2009, the Baita says that the residents of this area polluted the river, cut down the mangroves, hunted wildlife, and threatened the marine resources in the river. However, after persistent efforts by the local government unit in partnership with the community at educating the residents on the importance of preserving the natural resources in the area and utilizing the area in a sustainable way, these very persons and their families are now the ones who act as stewards of the Bohot River. This only goes to show that when sustainability is adopted as a way of life, it can lead to tourism that is transformative and regenerative. Here in the Bohot River, they have also demonstrated food security as a way of life. They grow their own food, which they then cook and serve to the guests that come here. 
The community is made up of farmers and fishermen. And by way of using food security as a way of life, they're able to support the livelihood of the area and give the community an appreciation for the preservation of nature as a source for the food that they grow. Waste management is also a very important component of the maintenance of this area. They use organic materials as well as minimize the use of plastic and ensure that the waste that they generate is as minimal as possible so as not to negatively affect the environs in the area. On the aspect of tourism as a social enterprise, it has greatly benefited the community because it has allowed members of this community to appreciate the necessity of preserving the natural resources of the area to be able to sustain the life cycle of the tourist destination. As a matter of fact, as early as when they started this initiative in 2009, they have already strictly implemented the carrying capacity of the area that has also allowed them to be able to closely manage and regulate the area itself so that it is not overdeveloped or overused. As an economic enterprise, livelihoods have blossomed from the Boho River crews, from those that supply the food to those that supply the materials that are used as they serve their guests, from the fishermen themselves who have now become tour guides in the area, as well as the farmers who assist in ensuring that there is always an available supply of food to serve the guests. Most importantly, the treatment of tourism as an ecological enterprise has greatly benefited the Boho River crews because this initiative has now been around for 13 years and is only growing stronger even coming out of the pandemic, having already received at least 50,000 visitors since our borders reopened. Despite the growing number of tourists that come to the area, they are able to ensure a close regulation of the scheduling of the visits so that the carrying capacity is never breached and that the environment is not negatively impacted. To ensure that this initiative lasts for a long, long time, they have begun the institutionalization of this sustainable development practices through education. The members of the local community act as tour guides and are well versed in all of the species of natural resources that are here. And they pay it forward by educating the public and ensuring that the public also gains a true appreciation for the natural resources that are here. And it is the cycle of education that ensures a continued appreciation for the necessity of sustainable tourism development practices. On the part of the Department of Tourism, sustainable tourism has always been the bedrock of tourism development in the country. As a matter of fact, Republic Act No. 9593, or the Tourism Act of the Philippines, stipulates that the state recognizes sustainable tourism development as integral to national socio-economic development efforts. The state also seeks to promote a tourism industry that is ecologically sustainable, responsible, participative, culturally sensitive, economically viable, and ethically and socially equitable for local communities. Under the Marcos administration, we have begun the work of ensuring that sustainable tourism development practices continue. We are now in the process of reconfiguring the accreditation standards for accommodation services to ensure that we incorporate incentives for sustainable tourism development practices as well as green practices in accommodation establishments. We are also launching the Philippine Tourism Awards to ensure that we give recognition to enterprises that promote sustainable tourism within various sectors of the tourism industry. Through this, we will encourage even more members of the tourism industry to have an appreciation for the necessity of sustaining tourism destinations for the long term. We have also already launched the Philippine Experience, 
a cultural, heritage, and arts caravan that will take our tourists through our 16 regions and give them an appreciation not only of our tourist destinations but all the other components of these destinations that make the Filipino brand unique such as our products, the work of our artisans and makers, our food, our fashion, and the like. In this manner, we are able to give not only our tourists, but also various communities from all over the Philippines, an appreciation of the importance of ensuring that we take care of each and every single component of a tourist destination. The Department of Tourism, in coordination with our regional offices, will be visiting our various provinces, cities, and municipalities beginning next year to be able to lend the expertise and assistance of the department in conducting cultural mapping activities, heritage mapping, as well as to conduct an inventory of all the products, food, as well as other components of tourist destinations in certain areas to be able to equalize tourism promotion and development nationwide. The Philippine experience was inspired by the Suri Suri Subu here in the province of Cebu, which has allowed all the local government units of the province of Cebu to develop their individual tourist destinations and to maximize domestic tourism by introducing a multi-dimensional experience to our tourists. That has also further develop the culture of tourism in our various local government units as the community is heavily involved in the development of the tourist destination as well as the other components of the same, including the promotion and development of its food and gastronomy offerings, its products, the work of our makers and artisans, and the like. As the lead coordinator for environment and climate change in the ASEAN National Tourism Organizations, the Department of Tourism continues to ensure that sustainability is at the forefront of tourism development. As a matter of fact, the Philippine Tourism Manual on Climate Change has been produced to the initiative of the Department of Tourism as a guide for how we are able to address the challenges of climate change while ensuring that tourism continues to develop here in the Philippines. The contribution of the tourism industry to our Philippine economy has been immense. Prior to the pandemic, it contributed more than 12.8% of our gross domestic product or more than 2.5 trillion pesos to our economy. Of course, the pandemic has devastated the industry. However, we are now in the period of recovery. Having breached our initial target of 1.7 million tourists, we are now at over 2 million tourists that have come into the Philippines, and domestic tourism flourishes across our country. Visitor receipts are now at 100.7 billion pesos, further demonstrating the impact that tourism can have in the economic resurgence of the Philippines. With President Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. having identified tourism as a major pillar for economic recovery, the Department of Tourism has identified seven main objectives upon which it shall anchor all its programs and plans, the bedrock of which is sustainable tourism. First, the improvement of tourism infrastructure and accessibility. Second, cohesive and comprehensive digitalization and connectivity. Third, we plan to enhance the overall tourist experience. Fourth, the equalization of tourism product development and promotion. Fifth, the diversification of our portfolio through multidimensional tourism. Sixth, the maximization of domestic tourism. And seventh, the strengthening of tourism governance through collaboration with local government units, the national government, as well as private stakeholders here and abroad. The next few years post-pandemic will focus on recovery programs and policies in tourism that will not only promote pandemic resilience, but also advocate for sustainable development. Indeed, instilling this culture of tourism would entail a paradigm shift among all of us in the public and private sectors alike.
While tourism numbers do play a role in measuring the success of any initiatives of government towards their tourism industry, more important is an emphasis on the importance of striking a balance between business opportunities and our social responsibility to take care of the destinations and resources bestowed upon us. That is our unique mandate in tourism, to both sell the destination as well as to preserve it for the long term. To ensure that the beauty of our country remains while people are still able to enjoy a unique Philippine travel experience. We would like our stakeholders to find ways with us to make our natural attractions even better than before. We invite our stakeholders to collaborate with us to be able to ensure the preservation of our natural attractions while ensuring its full development through institutional changes to strengthen it for the long term. We want our tourists to enjoy their travel and make it more meaningful by leaving a positive impact on the destination and host communities. Thus, we encourage everyone present here today to be our partners in this endeavor. I have high hopes that this forum will give all of us a better perspective on the necessity of sustainable tourism, not only for the urgent need for us to recover for the adverse impacts of the pandemic, but also for the long-term resilience and success of the tourism sector. Our eventual goal is to make tourism a powerful pillar for economic resurgence while championing the preservation and enrichment of the environment for future generations. Rest assured that we will continue our mission to herald the Philippines and the Filipino brand to the world and to ensure the continued sustainability of our islands. Dagang salamat kaninyong tanan.